hello and welcome. I am sitting here today with Glenn Taylor, CEO of the Nursing and Midwifery Health Program Victoria. Thank you and welcome, Glenn. Thanks, Zoe. Thanks very much for, the, for taking the time to talk to me today. Pleasure. Well, we're going to have a quick chat and today we are introducing the NMHPV Health and Wellbeing Toolkit. So, Glenn, what is the NMHPV, the Nursing and Midwifery Health Program Victoria? Um, can you tell us why was it established and why is it so important to the Victorian community? Sure, sorry. The, the Nursing and Midwifery Health Program was established in 2006, uh, probably well before its time in relation to supporting nurses and midwives. But it's essentially um, a nurse-designed, nurse-led, nurse-provided and midwife-provided support service for nurses, midwives and students um, throughout Victoria. And we, we look after nurses' mental health, um, concerns around their alcohol and drug use, um, if they're experiencing family violence or really any type of problem that is having um, a large or even a small impact on their, their health and well-being. Uh, we, we work predominantly with nurses and midwives who have issues which is work-related. So they may be things around stress management, workload, um, difficulty managing their work and life balance. There may be conflict or some sort of trauma experienced in the workplace. It may be violence. Uh, it may be bullying. It may be um, uh, persistent you know, death and loss and these sorts of things, which we typically just sort of put a, you know, take a stiff upper lip to and we just get on with it. So we started in 2006 and the program or the organisation, it's free to, to use, uh, it's confidential and it's independent from uh, all employers and any other organisations. So the, any callers, we call them participants. So any of our, our colleagues around the state who need our support, they can call us with confidence in knowing that when the phone is picked up, it will be picked up by a qualified nurse or midwife who has training and experience in counselling, particularly around alcohol and drug work, mental health concerns and family violence. So we do, we do, we sort of act as a bit of a beacon for family violence support and uh, we do the initial assessment and then refer on to those support services. One of the concerns, as I sort of just alluded to a moment ago for nurses and midwives, is that there's, a, there's been historically an expectation that we'll just do it and we will we'll turn up to work in the morning or the evening or at night and we'll just do it and then we'll go home and then we'll just do what we do at home and 91 percent of 89 percent of our of our profession are female and there's a, a lot of responsibility on our profession but certainly on, on women in our profession um, so they they go to work and get paid to do the work that they do um, often under duress or under very difficult circumstances and then they're expected to go home and do it again. Um, we, we haven't been particularly good at looking after ourselves. Mm. So it was um, some very insightful people in the early 2000s saw that there was a need for this type of a program which was provided by our own. So it's essentially nurses caring for nurses and midwives. And, and we, so far it's been really well received um, over the last 14 years. And we think that the, the model supports this and we're told that it is. So we essentially work with people's strengths. Um, they drive the care that they need. It's a voluntary program so they can call us at any time. And then we'll listen to what the concerns they have or what, what predicament they're in. And then we'll assist them to develop a plan. We'll assist them to execute that plan. And then we'll hold their hand along the way um, for as long as they need generally. That's brilliant. I... Um... I reflect, Glenn, that it's, it is sad and it's distressing that we need such a service, but we're just so fortunate that the program does exist and that we can provide our friends, our colleagues, our peers with this type of support. It's just wonderful. Um, are you able to elaborate a little bit, Glenn, on what are some of the reasons that nurses and midwives um, contact the program? I know you've touched on it um, slightly already. Well, unfortunately, it's human nature not to reach out at the first sign of concern or the first hint or the first warning sign or that feeling in your gut or that thought. Mm -hmm. And so typically, a lot of the people we look after, they've been enduring things for not only weeks, months, but sometimes years and decades. And it's, it's not uncommon for us to meet someone who's well into their career, um, who will uh, sit down with us, they'll engage us and they'll, they won't quite be able to put their finger on exactly what it is. 
and there might there might have been an event at work but it's you know in relation to most other things it's been pretty minor but it's not until they sit down in the room with us and they they feel comfortable to to, to talk about where they're at and what's what's brought them to the to the organization for support that they that they start to recognize when they're saying it they start to recognize exactly what they've consumed, observed, done, endured over weeks, months, decades, potentially. So it's, it's sometimes it's, it's, I mean, we deal, we, we say we deal with regular people who have regular issues um, on the whole. And, and what we find is it's just people who are just getting on with life, who just think that it's, there's, there might be some shame or some fear associated with asking for help or when the thing happened you know, years or decades earlier, it may not have been acceptable to ask for help or to put my hand up for help. And it isolates them. And they often feel as though they're the only one who's experiencing this. Mm-hmm. There's almost like this, um, this uh, secrecy uh, which goes with it all. And if I do put my hand up, then I'm going to be seen as weak. Um, I'm not good enough at my job. I'm going to, um, uh, you know, I'll I'll be reported to APRA or to the nurses board. Um, All of those things are typically untrue and they're myths that we like to, we like to work with busting. So it's, it's really, it might be some things which people have, have experienced in their, in their, in their life um, in terms of their upbringing. So they may, they may have sort of anxiety, uh, they may have experienced depression, which has been exacerbated by the job that they've been doing. Um, or it might be something, an event that's taken place, like a significant event in the workplace, which has really rocked them. Mm-hmm. So, and any, any other things. So we, we deal with really, we just say to people, look, anything that is having an impact on your health and well-being, it might be a relationship outside of work, uh, but it might be, you know, the sort of things that are going on at the moment are typically a good example where life's just been thrown in the air and we're meant to go to work or work from home and then homeschool and, and get on with all the other things which are yeah. expected us in life. So you've alluded to some some issues, Glenn, which are undoubtedly they're, they're challenges for us all and challenges that um, unfortunately uh, are, are present within our community, but... Um, from your perspective, what are the biggest challenges that you and your colleagues experience when when you're working within the program that you might be able to share with us? Um, the biggest challenge is really just, I think, developing that trust and rapport mm. because that's the underlying reason why the organisation exists is because that hasn't always been there and people haven't been able to necessarily trust that their information their identity will be respected or protected um, when there's no need for it to be disclosed. So we, we do believe that, that it's incumbent upon us to provide people with a really safe place to be able to firstly access, um, to be heard, to, be, to provide the assessment and support that they require, and then to, to help them along the way. So it's about yeah, that, that trust and rapport is probably the biggest thing. Mm-hmm. Um, in relation to the, the sort of the biggest issues that our colleagues are facing out there, I think it's just really around trying to juggle all the balls that we all have in the air at the moment. And one of the things that, one of the activities that we do with, with nurses and midwives when we speak to them in their workplaces is asking them to think about the roles that they play. Mm. And it's not about, that's excluding the work role. So you think about the multitude of roles that you play. And if you think about the roles that you've played today already, so I understand you're a new mum and yeah. um, uh, partner and, and, and friend and, and associate. So there's a lot of roles that we all play and, and we, we typically just get on with it. Uh, and we don't often think about the impact that that can have on us. So again, whilst we see people who are experiencing uh, or who may experience something, a response from a significant event, we, we do spend a lot of time supporting our colleagues who, who have um, experienced like a, a multitude of things that have just built up and built up and built up without them really, really recognising. Mm. So you've clearly, um, in, you know, you've, you've clearly, Glenn, got so much um, experience that you, you bring to this role. Um, and that's evident in the way that you're able to, um, you know, really provide such a, a detailed insight into some of the challenges that we're all facing. I guess, what's one thing that you've learned um, or a couple of things that you've learned during the 11 years that you've worked with the, the program? The thing that I keep on coming back to is that 
no problem is really insurmountable. Um, if it's left to us to, if it's left to me to try and manage myself and I spend too much time in my head, then we appreciate why it can seem impossible to come up, uh, to overcome. But I've worked with, and, and, and our team have worked with many people over the years who've come to us in what they would determine or deem as a crisis. Mm. And they, they're confronting something which is just going to completely ruin them only to work with us and to roll their sleeves up with us, allow us to help them, support them, give them a safe place to talk and speak and try and try out some new things. And then within, um, often usually within weeks or months, they, they're feeling completely different about things. Mm. So that really that this human condition that we've all got, it, you know, it, it's going to throw us curveballs all the time. But things can be overcome. And with the right support, you know, we're not islands, we have to reach out and we have to be open and available. And sometimes that's a risk, you know, to, to pick up the phone and talk to a stranger like me or my colleagues can be quite risky. And because, you know, who are they? What are they going to say? Are they going to judge me? Are they going to laugh at me? Are they going to talk to, talk to other people about me? None of which is true. But that fear exists. And, and we know that in our experience that really anything can, virtually anything can be overcome if we've got the right things in place, the right supports in place. Absolutely wise words. So on that note, Glenn, what's one key takeaway or one message that you'd like to leave on today? I'd just like to people to know that uh, we have been in this, in this game, in this field for uh, about 14 years now. And the feedback that we've received has been uh, generally very, very positive about the support that we've provided. And in some cases, life-changing. And that's not about us. Mm. It's about the individual's ability to be able to expose themselves and make themselves vulnerable, to take a risk to ask for help. So I guess the message I'd like to, to leave is if you've got any sense of need that you think that you might be in a position where your mental health or your physical health or your emotional health is, is at a point where you're concerned about it or you're not thinking clearly, you're not feeling connected to people around you or you're feeling low or you're feeling disconnected, it's just to pick up the phone. Um, the worst thing that will happen is that it won't be right for you mm. and, and, we'll, and someone will hopefully be able to refer you on to someone else. But typically, just picking up the phone in itself as an act is a, a very symbolic thing that people feel quite a cathartic experience. Mm -hmm. And just not even having a solution or having something be fixed, it's just about having someone to talk to who understands. And as, as nurses and midwives have been in the profession for a really long time, we do appreciate most of, if not all, of the things that you've experienced or you're talking about. So talking to someone who understands you is, is probably the thing that we're told is very helpful. Absolutely. And Glenn, in addition to picking up the phone and giving you guys a ring, I understand that there is a NMHP, NMHPV health and wellbeing toolkit that's just been released as a, another means to support um, the nurses and midwives in Victoria. Are you able to just share a little bit about that? We'll put all of the links and information um, to that um, along with this quick chat, but it would be great to um, hear from you just what this um, Health and Wellbeing Toolkit contains. Absolutely. Thanks for the opportunity, Zoe. So we, we worked with the department to, they, they saw an opportunity for us to build on what we've, what we've had for about six or seven years now, we've called our Champion Programme. And the Champion Program is about helping local nurses and midwives in their local regions um, identify themselves as champions for health and wellbeing. And with their support, we build up this, this toolkit and resource. And we also, and with the help of Osmin, we, we designed a self-care plan. And it's really a very simple way of just going in there and it's, it's, it's easy to use. And it's just about answering a few questions about, and it's not for people who aren't travelling well, they might be, but it can be for people who are doing really well in their health and well-being, but they might just want to tinker with some things or build on, the, on their strategies. So it's a very simple process. You, you get online, you answer a few questions, and then it sends a report to you based on what you said. And then that can be a way of just sort of keeping you accountable because there's mm -hmm. a plan in there. And then you can put it on your fridge or you know, in your diary or on your dining table and just remind you of what it is that you need to do to help build up 
um, with your self-care. And then attached to that is a quite an extensive what we call toolkit of resources. So there's links, it's information um, around all sorts of things which can help to build our physical, mental, emotional, psychological, spiritual um, health and wellbeing. So thank you very much for, for publicising that for us and for providing a link. Um, the feedback so far, it's, it's fairly, relatively hot off the press. The feedback so far has been really positive. And we hope that, um, that your listeners and, and users of, the, of Osmed services will be able to get something out of it too. Absolutely. So that's wonderful. I mean, what an amazing idea. You know, it's not a new thing. We as nurses, um, we write, we develop care plans for our patients, for our clients. We, um, you know, create a learning plan each year to address our professional development it makes absolute sense that we would sit down, um, reflect and answer a few questions that help us develop a self-care or a health and wellbeing plan. So it's our pleasure to share that. We'll make sure all of the links are included uh, alongside this resource and really encourage everyone to take the time um, and, and really um, reflect on their own self and wellbeing and create their own um, self-care plan. So, on that note, Glenn, um, is there anything you'd like to, to finish on? I'd just like to say that we very much, and this is a very, a very timely point, that we'd just like to appreciate, to recognise and appreciate the, the work of our colleagues, not just in Victoria, but around the country and the world at the moment. Yeah. Um, in light of, uh, we've just passed the International Day of the Midwife and we're coming up to the International Nurses Day. So we are, we're at the fore, we're at the, the forefront of this, this uh, what's going on out in the world at the moment and just to recognise how valuable we are, um, our colleagues are. So it's very important that we look after each other. I agree. Thank you very much, Glenn, for your time and thank you so. for all the wonderful work that you're doing with the NMHPV. It's greatly appreciated by all of our, our colleagues and our peers across the state. Thank, thank you. you very much.